Hi, this is Ari Burrell at Tourism Intelligence Group, and I'm going to show you a classic Google Analytics connection you can set up and post to the server to help you get the most out of your website traffic data. So inside of Tableau, I'm going to connect to the Google Analytics standard connection. going to ask me to authenticate and accept, which I will do, and that will pull up the accounts and profiles for the properties that exist. You'll want to make sure that you have the correct profile. Some of your profiles may have filters or other ways that it's um, separating data. So I'm going to connect to the correct profile. Now the date range options are very important. It will default to the last 30 days, which is rarely useful. If you're going to take this data, post it to the server, and do incremental refreshes on a daily, weekly, monthly, or quarterly basis, you're going to do what's called, you're going to select fixed start. So I'm going to pick a date range in the past. And when I post this and then I select incremental updates later, it will capture this data and then it will put the um, each incremental refresh will add to it the most current date range. So when you call, connect, if you were refreshing this daily, incremental refresh daily, you connect it to the um, data on the Tableau server you would see it updated as of yesterday. Assuming that Google Analytics wasn't down for some reason. So most of the time it's fixed start. There could be fixed range or um, some other increment that you just want to go in and keep it on your desktop to um, increment it locally. But most of the time it's, uh, it's almost always a fixed start. The next thing that I'm going to choose is uh, dimensions. So there's quite a few. Some of the more um, useful ones that we have found are looking at um, some of the advertising information. It's a lot of AdWords if you're trying to track AdWords for conversions. There's also audience such as if you have universal analytics you can look at the age or um, interests. Uh, metropolitan area which is the DMA is also useful. Uh, mobile device category will help you separate out desktop, mobile, and tablet so the device may be important to you. That's under um, audience. The content, you may be looking for the page that they are um, looking at. I'm going to go ahead and select page. Notice that if I pick out page it's going to really make the data much larger because you probably have a lot of pages. And some other common ones are uh, the medium, the source. Now you can get, you're limited to seven. If you choose source and medium, uh, we have formulas that you can use that will break out. So you only have to choose source medium and then use formulas to separate the source and the medium by using calculated fields. So that will help um, expand the number of options you have by one. Add content if you are trying to if you're testing um, between two different uh, like champion challengers or A and B testing, you can look at the add content. Now that requires you to have tracking URLs where the add content value has been populated. And if you are um, curious what one is, if you hover over it, you can see that there's a, a small menu that shows or guesses what that is. Under the measures, uh, you may be looking for social interactions. Um, normally that data is pretty sparse. haven't found it entirely useful. A lot of what you want is here, visits, visit duration, um, unique sessions. They're calling it sessions now. The API for Google Analytics still calls it visits, but that is sessions. And you can do both uniques, news, 
um, and regular visits. You can also go into um, conversions if you have um, e-commerce tracking or if you have goals you can pull out the goals here. If you have um, a segment that's already added to segment your data inside of Google Analytics you can pull that out here. You give it a name. I'll have to select a measure. Um, and now I can go ahead and ask it to pull. So once I'm done with that pull and it goes in and extracts the data and it may take a while depending upon how far back you go, how much data you have. And notice that the the date range is almost always daily. Intraday traffic reporting um, is very difficult to get out of Google Analytics through the API. So now I have my local data connection and if I'm going to publish it to the server I'll need to log into the server. Um, you probably will only have one of these available to you for the site. You may or may not give it a uh, project name. The project name will just help you find it later if you need to group. If you're going to have multiple of these and you want to separate them, you can add them into different, you can put them in different projects. Projects can be added through the web based interface. You give it a name. Now the authentication will need to be embedded password if I'm going to do a daily increment. Normally 6 a.m. is soon enough. So it's going to increment for 6 a.m., meaning I'll have yesterday's data through 6. I'll have yesterday's data added when I next look at this connection, assuming that Google Analytics isn't down. And I don't need a full, I just need the increment. And I have to uh, embed the password. And when I publish this to the server, it's going to ask me to log in again. Now the login is important because the account that you use will have to have access to that Google Analytics profile. Of course I wouldn't have been able to connect to it in the first place but it's just important to remember which of these accounts. So if you have a team member um, who is using um, their account and they, they leave your group for some reason and they don't have access to Google Analytics then the server is not going to be able to pull this data on that increment. So I hope this helps you set up that um, data and happy analyzing.